Vicky was 13 first time she was raped. After getting into a stupid, nonsensical argument with her mother, she slammed the front door and ran out of the house, ending up by the nearest 7-Eleven. Before she knew it, she was looking back at what seemed like kind eyes of some older guy that quietly asked her, Are you okay? Do you need a ride? Some minutes later, she was sitting shotgun of the stranger's car and he said to her, Would you like to go to a party with me? To which, in agreement, she quietly nodded and off they went. The next thing Vicky remembers is taking a sip of a strong Pepsi and then, then, then nothing but fog. She opened her eyes to strange male faces looking down at her. As she was laying on the floor, they were laughing and shoving a bottle of champagne into her you-know-what. Screaming in pain and a drunken rage, confused and hurt, she was able to somehow get herself off the floor, run out of the room, down the stairs of the strange house, leaving nothing but a trail of blood behind her. Vicky ran for what seemed like forever. She quietly walked back into her house, into the shower, and on the shower floor she wept heavy tears, adult tears. This is when Vicky understood loud and clear, tonight her childhood was long behind her. And the following days feeling ashamed, dirty, abandoned by the whole world, not knowing how to release her pain, Vicky started cutting herself. The deep cuts from the blade on her arm brought much needed release and relief even if it was so short-lived. Not wanting to deal with her or maybe not knowing how or yet maybe not caring quite enough, Vicky's mom had her own plans for Vicky. So one very cold night after crying herself to sleep, Vicky was woken by big men dressed in white uniforms, grabbing her out of her warm bed and carrying her into a van parked outside her house. Before she could make any sense of what was going on, the van sped off into the cold, dark, rainy night. Vicky ended up in a mental asylum. Waking up restrained to the bed, feeling absolutely helpless and yet again abandoned by the whole world, she could not fathom, not even in her wildest dreams, that this place would end up being her home for the next two years. She was forcefully fed strong narcotic medication every day to the point where she would forget where she was or who she was and on dark nights the door to her room would creak open and a deep male voice would order the drugged up Vicky to follow him. This monster, as Vicky would later refer to him, was the night staff in the facility and every night he would drug Vicky up even more than she already was and would take advantage of her and her child body for two straight years every day, robbing her of the last drop of innocence and childhood she so desperately tried to hang on to. No one knew about this incident nor about the first time Vicky was raped. You know how it is, girls always think that it's somehow their fault. Let me be the first one to say, no it's not. After the two terrible years have passed, Vicky came out of the asylum, 15 now, but more lost than ever. She continued cutting herself to such extreme extents that when we met a couple years later, her whole arm was covered up in scars, deep scars. She drank, took all kinds of drugs, and had promiscuous sex just to somehow try to cover up the pain, and guess what? Nothing helped. When she was 17 years old, Vicky's best friend Izzy introduced her to Niles. Niles was cool, charismatic, spoke like four languages, and everybody loved him. After the first time meeting Vicky and Niles fell in love, and it was the first time in Vicky's young life she felt special and worthy. No longer did she ever feel dirty or worthless. 
the two smoked weed, popped pills, but Niles made sure to always make Vicky feel wanted, needed, and appreciated, and most importantly, loved. There was nothing those two wouldn't do for one another, spending days and nights wrapped in one another's arms. One day, Vicky, Niles, and Izzy decided to run away. Figuring out a plan, they would get as much clothes as they could, steal a car, and drive to Cali and never come back. But as always, life had its own plans for these three. On the day they were set to execute their plot, Vicky, Niles, and Izzy were at Niles' mom's house. When there was a knock at the door and before you knew it, Vicky's mom was storming in, grabbing Vicky and taking her away before Niles or Izzy could do or say anything. Later that night, Vicky somehow managed to get in touch with Izzy, who was already at her house. Making plans to sneak out, Vicky asked Izzy to meet her down the street from her house when it gets dark and to tell Niles to steal the car they were going to in the first place and come pick them up from a location they would decide on later on. Vicky sneaks out, meets up with Izzy, and they start walking down the street to the nearby 7-Eleven to call Niles from the payphone. In the meantime, Vicky's mom already called the cops, and before reaching the 7-Eleven, a cop car pulled up next to the two teenage girls and ordered them to get in. Scared, panicking, and rebelling, Vicky and Izzy started to run away from the cop and towards a nearby railroad track. A few minutes later, the cop tackled Vicky, slaps handcuffs on. While Izzy was punching and kicking the officer to get off Vicky, the strong, tall man restrained both the girls and packed them into the back of the police car. Niles had no idea what happened next. And next, well, jail for Vicky, courts, much begging, Vicky's mom by Niles to let her go, many nights in front of the jail with no result. Vicky was yet again court ordered to do two more years in a facility somewhere far in the mountains away from home, from Izzy and most importantly away from Niles. This was a devastating blow to Niles. He tried drowning his sorrow by popping pills and smoking mad blunts. While in this facility, Vicky started writing a journal, but this was not an ordinary journal. It was a handwritten conversation with Niles. The only thing that helped her keep her insanity somehow and keep going somehow. So late nights and early mornings before going to sleep and after waking up, sitting next to a window in her cell, this is what Vicky wrote. This is where our story officially begins. P.S. There was something that Vicky never knew about that Niles did. And I don't know, I guess I'll release it to you all, reveal it to you guys at some point of this story. I guess towards the end. So make sure you stay tuned. This channel is dedicated to everyone and anyone that has been raped or taken advantage of. To every teenage girl out there that thinks life is over, you are not alone. Please write us and share your story. Let's bring this to light and let's put a stop to the abuse of all of our daughters and sisters and mothers and aunties. Once again, this is a true story, a true account, word for word. Stay with it.